Welcome to another episode of the Distributed Data Show brought to you by Datastax Academy, where we bring you the latest news and interview technical experts to help you succeed in building large-scale distributed systems. Hey everyone, Patrick McFadden here at Data Day Texas in 2018, and today I have Holden Corral, author of Learning Spark, High Performance Spark, also developer advocate at Google. Thanks, Thanks for, for being me. here. No, it's really great to be here. So uh, we're t- it's time for us to catch up once again. Yeah, I mean, it's it's been six months. All of the APIs have changed. Everything's changed, yeah. yeah you know. And of course, we're going to talk about Spark, the, the moving project of Spark. It's, it's getting a little more stable, you know. It's always stable, yeah. Yeah, no. yeah. It's, it's stable provided you have a support contract. <clears throat> So, Spark 2.3, that, that'll be our topic for today. And um, we have <laughs> new APIs. <laughs> yeah, we do, we do. Um, there's a lot of exciting new APIs coming in Spark 2.3. Uh, do you have any specific ones you wanted to like delve into? Well, maybe first, I mean, I mean what, what do, why do we have to keep changing things? What is the reason for keep changing things? Like, isn't there a stability moment can we can have a Spark? Or is it just... What is it? I mean, it's a good question. Um, and I, I think when when we're stable, we won't be interesting anymore. Uh, like, fundamentally, we will probably reach a point where Spark becomes infrastructure that you don't have to think about. And at that right. point, I need to find a new job. But, you know, everything gets a lot easier. But I don't think we're there yet, right? There are, there are a lot of things which we are still relearning from the 70s to implement on today's hardware. Um, and, you know, then we still have to catch up with the 80s. Right. That happens. Yeah, yeah. No. Computer science is an old, old discipline. And we just keep relearning the same things, don't we? It is. But we, we add another layer of abstraction to keep things exciting and a little, a little less efficient. So it's, it's good. So uh, later today, I'm talking about 10 years of Cassandra, and it is getting boring. It's it shouldn't be exciting. I mean, that's that's good in I a way. Know. Yeah. So I, I guess what I'm doing is I'm agreeing with you. It will, eventually, it will be boring, but that's good. Yeah. No, it's it's good, but like I need to find a new job when that happens, and uh, you should you probably know. update your resume. Yeah, I should update my resume, or maybe talk more about Spark for a while. That seems to be working. I, I mean, it's not bad. It's it not bad. bad. It's a good gig. Uh, so. A few of the changes, um, I think one of my favorites, because I'm not much of a Scala dude, is Python, PySpark. Yeah. So uh, some changes coming there. What's, what's going on there? Totally. So the biggest, most exciting change for PySpark is the vectorized UDFs coming in Spark 2.3. Um, mm-hmm. And they're powered by Apache Arrow, which is this really exciting project Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, from Wes McKinney, the folks at Two Sigma, some of the folks at my former employer, IBM. Um, and some of the folks at Databricks, and it's it's a uh, okay, yeah. Jake Luciani is on the PMC, so there's it's it's a really great cross industry collaboration, right? Um, and it gives us this this really nice in memory format for representing data, right? Um, but also representing columnar data, which you know, yeah, we we care about, and it gives us a nice way of transferring data from. Uh, the JVM into Python mm. uh, and back. And it also uh, makes it easier for us to implement vectorized operations in Spark, uh, which beforehand, when we looked at it, sounded like mm. way too much work. Yeah, uh, it sounds like a lot of work. Yeah, it's like, you know, I mean, we could write some Fortran code, but um, <laughs> we've already got Scala developers writing Python code. You really don't want Scala developers writing Python code and Fortran code. That is just rough. And so, so now we. So are got... you telling me only, the only good vectorized libraries out there are in Fortran? <laughs> no, no, I'm just <laughs> because saying... I wouldn't. I wouldn't disagree with you because Fortran's been around long enough to where it's pretty baked. Most of the good, yeah, libraries have at least a Fortran base, right? Like there is there is a like yeah, de facto yeah. standard Fortran implementation, and there is like also like a GPU implementation as well, which is generally not written in Fortran. Right, CUDA is, is slightly yeah. different, but they, they they very much take their inspiration from Fortran. And so, if you're going to be working on vectorized operations at some point, yeah, you have to learn Fortran, and that's not me. No, I I, I did it in college as a class because they wanted us to know that. And I don't 
I don't want that. You don't want to do that no. again. Yeah. So, so, but the, the nice thing with, with vectorized UDFs in Python is that we can write Python code that will end up using these wonderful uh, Fortran libraries and, and fancy, you know, newer CUDA libraries. Um, and it's, it's really exciting because um, the traditional really expensive thing in PySpark has been getting the data from the JVM into right. Python. And this just really accelerates it a lot. Mm. And it even opens the door to further accelerations with like shared memory buffers yeah. in the future. And that's, um, it's not where we are today in Spur 2.3, but it's Spur so, 2.3 will have like basic UDF vectorized UDF support. And 2.4 is probably going to bring like shared memory buffers. I was going to no, say SIMD. Not a guarantee. SIMD? I mean, yeah, you, you, you put on some D ops on these. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. Fine. So I mean, this opens up a lot of doors. Oh yeah, no, it's it's yeah. it's great. Like we're we're switching from like lists to like right. actual nice representations that that our CPUs and and things are optimized for. Well, and looking at options for deployment on hardware, that's that's driving this for sure. No, it's it's big. I mean, Nvidia is no longer a video card company. No, they they really aren't. And 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 they're they're involved in some of the arrow work as well, right? right. So yeah, it's yeah. it's not like this is just a bunch of big data people like playing around having fun. Like the, that happens, but not this type. No, I, I don't get my Bud Light Lime. The Nvidia folks get yeah, there's going to be a few hundred <laughs> more GPUs <laughs> available on Google Cloud. Um, oh, yeah. You got the pitch in. Right on. Yeah. I don't All actually right. know if we have NVIDIA GPUs, but whatever. We have GPUs from somewhere. <laughs> somewhere. They're out there. Yeah. Buy six of them. Uh, maybe by tomorrow. Maybe you did an announcement. We'll, we'll oh. cut that if it's true. <laughs> All right. So we should get out of this subject real quick before we get into trouble. So my one of my personal favorite topics, uh, because I talk about it, so much it's streaming yeah. and some changes you know spark has always been the micro batch yeah. come to us for micro batch but there's changes coming there are um and so i mean there's only so long you can be made of fun of as the micro batch processing architecture <laughs> before like one of your grad students uh, or former grad students now at this point drinks a lot of coffee um, that helps. and just writes a new engine um, which is the grand tradition of Spark, right? Yeah. Um, but the the changes coming in 2.3 for this are, we can see the sources and sinks are no longer tied to the concepts of batches as directly mm. anymore. Um, we have this idea of like inserting uh, epochs occasionally so we can have like this flow mm. and understand where, where our records are coming from. Um, but there's also uh, options to essentially like turn off all of the safety brakes and just like, yeah, Let let's it just go. run it. <laughs> yeah. Let's just power through this. You don't care about data integrity. It's great. It's a tunable consistency. Well, there are cases for that, you know. No, there, there are. IoT use cases where if you lose data along the way, that's OK. Yeah, it, it really doesn't matter. If I drop, and, and I think like machine learning is a great place where some of the time this can certainly be the case, right? right. If I have such an overflow of data coming in, it's fine if I drop a few, you know, percent of records on the floor. If I process a few twice for updating my model, it's not the end of the world, right? right. Simply being able to update and respond quickly is enough of a game changer that I'll take this trade off. Um, and I, I want to be clear: like, we can get out of the micro batch architecture without having to make that trade off. It's just if you want it to go like super fast, that's the trade off you have to well, make. Well, yeah, you know, back in the day when I was pitching, you know, we had this. Uh, this kind of test project on GitHub is uh, killer weather. It was all these really, we were doing microbatch, but we were also doing discrete processing, but we were using Akka for that. Okay, yeah. And I think we just simplified that architecture in this case. Yeah, now you can just use Spark on both sides. You don't right. have to have two separate things running. And uh, any solution that says less complexity, I'm yeah. all for. No, I, I think fundamentally we've seen that general purpose systems are essentially eating the world, right? Like, yeah. you don't want to have to run three different data stores. You don't have to run three different processing engines. As much as I can, like, I want one deployment program. I want one deployment uh, methodology. I want to understand the deployment of one type of thing. Yeah. I don't want to have to learn twenty things because I will forget the twentieth. No. Yeah. And like, I mean, the the just looking at the O'Reilly titles coming out, there are way too many of these for anyone to keep up with, right? Like, you cannot read all of the O'Reilly big data books that come out in one year in the span of like maybe. Oh, five just in years. streams. Yeah. Streaming is exploding. Uh, and it's like, it's getting stupid. 
But it had to happen. Yeah, no. I mean, it happened in the NoSQL space, and it went, and then it's now doing this, and coalescing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's the way the market works, right? We have 100 new ideas. We find out 95% of them were kind of garbage. Um, yeah. And then the remaining 5% fight amongst each other, and eventually uh, two or three winners come out, and uh, yeah, it's great. So uh, is this pretty steady, solid, or is this like in test? Or oh, dear God, yeah, don't use this in production. Um, <laughs> this are the questions I have to ask. <laughs> right, yeah, no, sorry, I should have clarified. When I say a feature is new, what I mean is this this is exciting and new, but like it's been run on Hello World. Like, you, <laughs> okay, like a little more than Hello World. Right? A little, little more, yeah. But word count. Yeah, word, word count. It's, it's, it's probably enough for everybody. Yeah, yeah, no, I agree. It's yeah. why we use it in all of our presentations. I, I use word count in the Twitter feed. Oh, yeah. It's a yeah. Great, How many hashtags great can I count? Yeah. Um, but, you know, like, if you use this in production, um, please don't work in an industry which will kill me. Because uh, I do not want to end up in one of those textbooks as, like, the lady that got killed by her own software. Oh, yeah. You remember reading those engineering. Oh, yeah. yeah it's like the, the, the radiation machine that killed people. Yeah. No. And if, like, if it killed the creator, like, that, you, you're never going to live it down. Right? Like, yeah. I don't want to die. Um, I mean, those I stories change my software kill. career. Yeah. I'm going to do stuff that will not kill people. No, like there is a reason that I do yeah. analytics rather than like airplanes. Yeah, I love airplanes, but like I like not being responsible for this stuff. It is really too much of a challenge for me. I don't want to think about it. I no. can sleep at night though, yeah. all the time. Let's uh, let's get off the topic of people dying. Yeah, it's pretty um, bad. Very good. So, all right, that's yeah. We're not going to talk about that anymore. But let's let's get into something a little more cheery, and that's. Surprisingly enough, I didn't realize this was a thing, but Kubernetes support for Spark, and yeah. that's uh, that's not really what I think of Kubernetes is for running Spark workloads. No, totally. Kubernetes did did not start out as running analytics workloads, no. right? Um, but I think as as we were talking about earlier, general purpose systems eat the world, and if I have like a Kubernetes cluster and a Young cluster, I look at those two things and I go, why do I have two things? Right. I can have one thing. And then, right, like, you know, I can do the brilliant idea of scheduling my analytics workload in my spare production capacity. And that works out just fine until right. anything happens. It's like my spare time that I can work on side projects. Right, yeah, no, all yeah. six hours yeah. per year. Um, Between two and three in the morning. Oh, no, it's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's... That's my Lucky Charms time. Yeah, you can't have Lucky that. Lucky Charms with Red Bull. No. Yeah. Um, <laughs> right. So no, I think Kubernetes support in Spark is is exciting. Um, we maybe didn't handle it the greatest out of the bat. Um, the, and so there's been multiple forks of Spark for Kubernetes support, which is like, as an open source maintainer, you're like, ah, this is not a good sign. This is a sign that I have not succeeded at my job. Independent forks? Yeah, they don't talk to each other so much. Oh, that's horrible. Yeah, so not so good. The fork um, of death, as we call it. Yeah. But it's OK. Um, we brought one of them back to the fold, you know, showed them the good book of the ASF way. Um, oh, good. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm sure you have no feelings about that. None at all. Uh, None at all. <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back to talking about Kubernetes now? <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. <gasps> trigger, so, trigger. <laughs> I, I'm so sorry. That's all right. But no, so... Um, we for Spark 2.3 we're integrating this sort of first pass of Kubernetes support. Oh right. Um, in Spark, and there's a bunch of really interesting things coming in this. Um, one of the things which is really interesting is uh, one of the traditional challenges with Python uh, that we were talking about earlier is sort of library support and deploying your Python libraries on Yarn right. is about as fun as a rusty spoon to the eyeballs. I, I can say that on the Apple yeah. one, right? Yes, yeah, okay, we good. So rusty spoon eyeballs. Yarn, Python dependencies. But with K8, it's actually a lot easier um, to specify containers in ways which are actually, you know, capable of packaging all of my, like, specialized Fortran code from the 70s that I do not want to rewrite, and that one weird COBOL app that I'm somehow still using. Um, and so a lot of legacy going on there. I mean, yeah, legacy rules the world. Um, but, like, at the end of the day, I, I'm really excited because uh, K8 is going to make it a lot easier for us to ship sort of complicated Spark applications that depend on non-JVM components. Uh, so what about, so here's the thing that I've always seen Kubernetes awesome at. Yeah. Scaling up. But 
How about down? <laughs> well, so let's 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 be fair here. Spark is terrible at scaling down. You're right. Um, it has one of the worst experiences for that. Um, there's uh, some solutions from some vendors who I won't talk about because they no longer pay me money. Um, but you know, choose talk to your vendor uh, and ask them if they will sell you a customized solution for this. Um, right. <laughs> your mileage may vary. Yeah, your mileage may vary. Uh, please continue to use my employer if you do. Um, but, I mean, scale down is a hard problem, right? right. Um, and especially with Spark, because we tend to co-locate data um, alongside our executors. Um, and so there's some things we can do, right? We can not co-locate data right. alongside our executors. But that is about as fun as performance for the rusty spoon and eyeball again, right? Yeah, um, yeah. Except now the rusty spoon is on a string that I have to pull over to me from the other room. Right. Um, should pick a different. Didn't need a new analogy, but we can work on that for the next time you're here. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, Pulling hair. But how do I do that with a string? Uh, yeah, that's all right, we'll work on it. Okay, it's fine. It's fine. So, yeah. Um, right, so, but. Uh, where were, I got distracted with I, we were talking about scaling down and that's oh, a yeah, difficult yeah, yeah. problem no. because you know that's in Cassandra world it's the same problem yeah uh, you can but it's difficult it is um, it's, it involves a lot of coordination and streaming and data getting lost it is especially so as we were talking about earlier with streaming yeah oof, uh, scaling down streaming applications which you know are occasionally the kinds of apps which are more likely to experience like, right. temporary peaks that you want to scale back down from when your holiday right. season is over um, yeah we don't have a good solution for scaling down yet um, and this is less on the individual cluster managers and more on the way how spark is uh, manages its memory um, there's some interesting work, though, coming. Mm. Um, in Kubernetes or in Spark? So both sides. Um, actually, Spark and, and Yarn. Um, there's there's some interesting things in Yarn coming as well. So Yarn actually has this idea of decommissioning. Right. Um, but it does a really poor job of communicating it right now. The APIs mm. are kind of not very good. And Kubernetes has better ideas of communicating um, similar concepts, different right. words, same ideas. Well, it's, um, no, um, how many different ways are you going to run infrastructure? Really? I mean, yeah, it's true. You're but online, like, you're not online. We're going to use a lot of different words to describe the same concept because true. Like, Just, I like money. And it seems to be the way we build things. It's true because we, we don't talk to each other except like every six months when we catch up in these conferences. <laughs> That's right. Um, On mailing list or something, yeah. Yeah. So I mean, uh, so there's there's that side of it's being worked on, um, and it's pretty exciting. But on the Spark side, we need to do a little bit of a catch up with sort of doing the right. data migrations intelligently. Um, I have a PR obviously in this area that I think is pretty good, but that uh, opinion is perhaps not what one could describe as universally uh, shared. Are you PR pitching? No, no, never. So. But if uh, someone else is on the Apache Spark PMC, <laughs> um, would love to help me review this. No, more, more seriously. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't actually want to update this PR. I just want one of the things to get in. Um, and it's it's one of the things which we're all thinking about. So there's a few right. different implementations which take different approaches. Um, they're not going to make it for Spark 2.3. Uh, I think the K8 support is going to go in for 2.3. I mean, the K8 support is in for 2.3. And essentially, there's a bunch of sort of follow-up work which we're going to have to do sort of to catch up uh, in 2.4. And it's so important that we get State of the art is would you... Is there any case where you would want someone running, or would you be comfortable putting Kubernetes and Spark into production right now? Uh, well, no. Um, okay, that's, that's a fair thing. So is that going to be something that, you know, just previewing another topic, is that something that's going to be first class citizen in three? Oh, yeah, no. I think, I yeah. think it's going to be, so I think, I think much before three. I think right. we'll get there much faster. It's just uh, the idea of using a new cluster manager the first time it's merged back into master. Listen, I'm not that cautious. Yeah. But like, yeah, even no. I have my hard limits. That's 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 one that you're probably going to want on chest for a long time, and even yeah. then, not trust it. No, I mean, I think it's 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 fine for things like exploratory analytics, and it's a, it, right. it would be a really great way to sort of test it out in your organization and see if it right. like find the breaking points. But I would not put my production jobs on it. Yeah, no, that, I think that's anytime I see new features, you know, that's just give it a while. I mean, it, the shiny features. This is just a general rule. You see shiny features, let it shine. 
Don't. <laughs> right, yeah, if you use it, you find out that it's terrible. Risk your job oh, on well, Shiny. I mean, no, whatever, it's fine. I might but... keep my resume up to date. <laughs> Holdcare.com. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, awesome. not up to date. I should update my resume. Yeah, you should update. Well, we'll give you some time. Ah, that's cool. Yeah. All right, I think this has been a really good overview on Q3 <laughs> and potentially the end of your career. But, no, um, come on. No, like, no, it's great. Whatever. I can always go back to just regular software development. It's yeah. okay. That is a job. I blend in nicely. You blend, yeah. Yeah, you blend. Uh, so <laughs> that was a bad line. <laughs> That's why I love having you on. Um, so it's great to catch up, man. Yeah, thanks a lot. I really appreciate you coming in, and we're gonna have to do this again um, soon because things keep changing. Yeah, uh, Strata or where you want to catch up next? Wherever we are. Cool. All right. Bud Light Lime, though. Bud Light Lime. Okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you next time. Thank you for joining us again for the Distributed Data Show. We love your feedback, so go to the Distributed Data Show page on DataStacks Academy and tell us what you think. You can also find us on the DataStacks Academy YouTube channel or find our podcast on iTunes, Google Play, or wherever you get great podcasts. While you're there, make sure and subscribe so you don't miss a single episode.